Hello and welcome to Tailored Moto TV episode number 5. This time I want to follow up on the last video I showed you where I showed you my ideal ordering interface for uh, electric motors and of course behind that interface some magic must happen to make that motor then real and since I'm an engineer I don't believe in magic I believe in mathematics and I was looking at the mathematics behind electric motors and that's what I want to elaborate in this video. What we want to make is an electric motor where we can vary the size nearly continuously. So we have a, a field of electric motors where we want to have any point as a possible solution. So, what we first want to vary, of course, is torque and speed. So, if we draw torque and speed in a plane and have the power as a z-axis, if we have torque is x and speed is y and the, the power is, is z, um, obviously we have a linear function, so we get a plane. So, somewhere in that plane we want to be free to move around and if once we have selected one point on that plane standing for a, a special power and a special speed and a special torque once we have that point we want to keep these constant and start varying the diameter versus the length we also want to change the diameter and the length continuously or nearly continuously. I mean, if you look at a manufacturing con process, it, it will not make sense to, to have uh, increments of 0 0.5 millimeters, but if you just have increments of 5 millimeters, that would offer a really great freedom to, to the engineer who is designing a machine. The torque, the torque is equal the diameter of the motor square times some constant, uh, no, times the length times a constant. So it's linear with the length, it's square with the diameter. Very old known uh, physics that that constant k is the big unknown. Can, can we find a constant k that is physically feasible? applying to the design we have chosen because that would make it very easy to calculate okay we need that much torque we we go into the field we we have if we need that much torque that will be the size of the motor the second important point of course is the rpm the rpm are way more complex to to calculate because you have some effects like uh, centrifugal force if, if you make an in-runner, you will have a force that drags your magnets away from the rotor. That at some point will destroy you the motor. RPM is limiting with the ball bearings. Ball bearings are limiting and eddy currents are also a limiting factor compared to the pole count. What kind of motors do we want to take? Let's restrict that whole thing a little bit to, to narrow the, the possible solutions so so we can easier we can solve that motor in, in an easier way um, so i i looked at many different motor designs and i ended up by selecting the permanent magnet synchronous motor the pmsm also known as bldc but i don't specially like the term of bldc because it's not a DC motor, it's an AC motor. So we have a PMSM and it's an in-runner. So we have the rotor inside with the magnets on the outside of the rotor, which is one of the difficult designs on the, of the in-runner. But I will go more into this. 
but we have the whole stator outside and that's very good for cooling because then outside we can make some cooling fins or even water cooling to, to get that heat out and so that's why I chose the in runner uh, compared to the out runner. Probably later on we will also have a look at the out runner. The out runner also has some advantages but I think it's less less scalable. And in an in runner motor um, we have um, a state of teeth. So if if we make a segmented rotor, yeah, that's also a point. Um, if we make a segmented motor, um, we we have the advantage that we can wind more copper onto each tooth because we can take apart the teeth, wind the coil and put them together. So that's basically one of the reasons I want to go for a segmented stator. Gives us more parts, but also gives us more flexibility. The big advantage is that uh, if, if you want to make different diameters, there is no way around uh, die-cutting the, the stator segments. And if you have to die-cut a whole, st whole stator, that mold, that, that cutting die will be very expensive. The smaller your cutting die is, the cheaper it gets. And of course then you get slower in manufacturing because per, per round you need to make uh, 12 or more of these small stator segments but I think in, in our case this is not a problem because you, you can let run that machine very quickly. So we make a segmented stator, that's one of the stator segments as you can see. So yeah this one is a little bit curved here too. So that's, here around we have the housing of our motor. Here inside we have our rotor. And on the rotor we have little magnets. That's basically it. That's, that's the design of the motor. We have many of these all around. And now the big questions are, how high is this? How high is this? How wide is this? How high is the, the, tip, the tip of the tooth? How big is the magnet? And, and so on. And these are the key variables we need to calculate to make an efficient motor that, that is long living and, and so on. And to really know this geometry, have a look. I, I made a a drawing in the C8, in my CAD system. It's actually the, the same model than, than we have on GrabCAD. Um, if, yeah, here on, on that drawing, I have named all these dimensions and we nearly can change them independently. Several of them are linked to each other. And of course, the geometry of the tooth defines how much space we have left for the copper and this again with the diameter of the wire will give us how many turns we can make uh, but still I think it is in the end about 20 variab variables it's about 20 variables rough estimation of myself that we can change to optimize the motor and with today's computing power, with the existing simulation tools, there are open source simulation tools available. I made a, a blog page here with the link to the open source magnetic simulation tool that's available. And so the first idea would be to make a software model, play around with these dimensions, play around also with the pole count, which is a very important factor for torque versus speed and then get a feeling on if, if we want to go on this part of that plane and the, of that plane of power uh, if we have want this torque and this speed our dimensions should be roughly over there and then of course 
we will have to validate this by experiment. But it's, it's not that difficult, actually. I think so. If you think I'm wrong, if, if you have experience in this and think I'm completely oversimplifying the problem, I'd be very happy to have your feedback. Thank you. Bye-bye.